couple of reminders before we begin. We are going to start with an opening statement from the head coach, followed with questions for the student athletes. At the conclusion of the questions for the student athletes, they'll be dismissed. Then questions for the head coach can start. Please raise your hand and someone will come around with a microphone. Please give your name and media affiliation. If you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We, we will address questions in the room first and get to Zoom if time allows. Now, we'll start with the opening statement from NC State's head coach, Kevin Keats. Well, for those who are not here in, in Pittsburgh, um, I'll start off by, by saying that, man, Oakland is good as good as advertised. I mean, he is, Greg's done a great job with that program. And, um, you know, this is a tough, hard fought, you know, felt like a, a boxing match. Um, our, our guys were tremendous. Um, you know, it was a back and forth game. Um, we bent a little bit, but we never broke. Uh, we made big plays when we had to have big plays. Uh, I thought one of the biggest things for us is our character really shined through when we needed it. Um, you know, we stepped up in many ways. We had to get big stops. We had to get big baskets. Uh, at times, things weren't going our way. Um, and it just, it just shows you the growth of, you know, obviously this team and how they're locked in and their focus and, um, you know, their love for one another and how they play for one another. Um, it's been very impressive. This run that we, we've been on, it, it's really, really good. And it, all the credit has to go to the hard work that they put in. And obviously they're receiving the uh, fruits of their label because of that. So excited about our, our guys. Um, you know, we're, we're going to the Sweet 16, guys. I mean, and, th and this was a team that, you know, most people didn't think we could even make it out of, um, you know, uh, D.C. last weekend or a couple weekends. I don't know how long it's been. But I'm proud of their fight. I'm proud of, um, you know, just who they are and how we have really grown as a team. Okay, representing NC State student athletes are D.J. Burns, Jr., Michael O'Connell, and Casey Morsell. Questions for the student athletes? Back right. Matthew Thedros, Duquesne Duke. This question is for Michael or Casey. When DJ is dominating in the post game, a double double, how does that energize the team and get you guys motivated? Mike, you want to start? Yeah, I mean, I think it's huge for us, obviously, when he's down there doing his thing. Um, and we just keep feeding him. You know, we have, we have no problem with feeding him, and he brings energy too. And he, you know, he's making great plays down there, and we, we can feed off that. And I, I think it's big time for us, honestly, when he's playing at all time high um, with confidence that we kind of just go along with it and it helps us out. Casey? Yeah, uh, when, um, when DJ gets going, it makes it easier um, for us guards on the perimeter. Um, he draws so much attention, and um, you know, all we could do is just kind of stay ready, stay ready to shoot, stay ready to make a play. Um, but you know, when he's going, um, we're very hard to stop. Tom, back right. Tom with his Associated Press. Uh, DJ, not that you needed any extra motivation, but you were having kind of a running commentary with the Oakland fans throughout most of the game. Did that fuel you a little bit? Yes, sir. Um, I I enjoy things like that. You know, that's what that's a part of the game. You know, the fans they're gonna really come at you, and you know, especially when they have a team like that with the capabilities that they have. Um, is you got to talk. You know, you got to have some fun with it. Left middle. Michael Deemer, Century Media. For all three, you guys obviously you guys have been the underdog, and everyone has been cheering you guys on. It's definitely different tonight, as it seemed it was a predominantly Oakland crowd. What was the mindset going into the game about that and also during the game when you guys were, I guess, the lesser crowd, I guess. Mike, you want to take that? Yeah, I think going into the game, we don't really focus on, you know, who's the underdog or who's the higher seed or lower seed. It's kind of just the matchup at hand. Obviously, any team in here is a great team and they could have been higher or lower, we could have been higher or lower. It doesn't really matter, you know, just going into the game, we just take the matchup, our per personal, and uh, we kind of just go out there and play. And, I mean, we still we still had a lot of fans out there. The place was rocking. You know, when when we would get going and we were scoring and get stops like that place, it was loud. So I didn't really even t couldn't even tell the difference if there was more or less fans. So I mean, I, I'm, it was great to have our fans out there just supporting us along the way. Brooke, front right. Brooke Pryor, ESPN. DJ, you nodded when your coach said it was like a boxing match out there. Just what was the challenge that they were throwing at you in the post? And looked like you got really fired up after you hit the bucket and got fouled and just stared down the camera. What was going through your mind during that play? Uh, again, it's one of those games, you know, um, where I had the choice to, you know, get in my feelings about getting fouled or continue to play hard. Um, I just, 
hit a point where I was like, I just got to ignore it because it's not going away. So um, I just wanted to try my best to keep going for my guys. Left aisle. George Gerba, Washington Times. Michael, final minute. You hadn't taken, uh, you've taken only threes to that point, and there's less than 10 seconds left on the shot clock, and you just take your head down from, from the top of the key and drive it all the way to the basket, get the bucket, get the foul shot. What, just take me through that, that process to, it felt like a turning point there to get you guys back a little bit more of a lead in the final minute. Yeah, I mean, I was just, I was just taking what the defense was really giving me. Honestly, um, they were pressing out. I kind of just he went one way and tried to make a crossover and go make a play. If if they stepped up, I was gonna just kick it, but it, I felt like I could take a layup and I just tried to do what I could to finish the play. And if I can do a quick one for Casey, you had the primary assignment on Jack Golkey tonight. Um, able to lock him down. You guys did a lot of great defensive switching. From growing up in D.C., I'm curious if there's anybody that that you've played that was a, that you've seen. Uh, in your career that's been a shooter like that, that type of ability? Uh, no, um, I, I <laughs> never played anyone who could shoot at that caliber. Um, you know, one thing that Jack does, he always, uh, he tests your awareness because um, he's always moving and um, in order to kind of slow him down, you just got to be in shape and you just kind of, like I said, you just got to be aware of where he is of all times and he tested that. And um, But it wasn't just me, it was a team effort, you know, JT guard him and you know, Horn, Mike, you know, everyone was kind of doing their best to kind of slow them down. We got two, we got time for two more for student athletes. Right aisle and then left over here. Bailey Tucker, College Basketball Review. This is for all of you. But like Coach Keats said earlier, people didn't expect you to be in this position. So what's your message to those people who didn't expect to see NC State make it to the Sweet 16? DJ, you want to start and work your way down? Uh, well, I, I've been be nice. saying it. Be yeah. nice. I've been saying it, you know, welcome back. You know, they didn't really believe in us. And, you know, they probably still don't. But that doesn't matter to us. We're just going to stay together. Um, if you're supporting us, thank you. If not, that's what it is. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing, honestly, is just no matter what the outside noise is, we got to believe in ourselves. And I think that's what we've been doing to this point since before the ACC tournament. And we kind of left everything in the past. And we had to take one game at a time. And I think that's what we've been doing now. The coach has been preparing us really well. And, you know, we've been kind of taking that message and trying to apply it to the floor. So, I mean, if people are with us, it's great. If they're not, it is what it is. But um, we'll take all the support we can get. But at the same time, we have to just let, rely on the people, you know, in the locker room to go out there and compete. Got thing to add, Casey? <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. I mean, just, uh, you know, we're going to stay connected no matter what goes on on the outside. Um, you know, for us, it's been a roller coaster of emotions. But, uh you know, we, we've seen a lot, and, um, you know, we're not going nowhere. We're here. Last question for student athletes right here on the left. Will Graves, AP, for all you guys, how does a team that won eight games from January 1st to the end of the regular season win seven games in 12 days to get to the Sweet 16? Did you want to start? Uh, I think that's what March is about. You know, um, some teams got here by winning their conference just like us, and, you know, that doesn't mean they're a bad team. You know, um, we executed, and... Sure, we just we just kept playing for each other. I think that's all it was about for. Uh, yeah, I would say sticking together, honestly, throughout all the tough times. It's things aren't going to be always be pretty, and things aren't always going to go your way. But if we can stick together with the the guys you're out there competing with, I think that's going to go a long way. When times are not favorable, it's just, you got to be able to pick each other up and you know just keep competing. At the end of the day, it's you compete with the five guys on the court, and the guys are playing with you. Casey. Uh, yeah, all, what all those guys say is true, but uh, but also just our resources that we have, um, our strength coach, um, our doctors that travel with us, you know, massage, like everything um, to help us um, be ready to play and, and not get tired. Uh, you know, that's something that's definitely given us advantage in March. All right, thank you. All right, once again, please raise your hand. Someone will we'll come around with the microphone. Questions for Coach Keats. Front right. Uh, Colby Trotter, technician. Obviously, Casey said earlier it was a team effort to guard Jack Olkey tonight. What did you think of how your guys did? I know it's a hard job chasing that guy around. And you limited, to, limited him to a decent amount of shots. He just made most of them. So what did you think of, the, of their job? Well, he's dangerous, and you you, ha you got to pay so much attention to him. And then when you look at the fact that, you know, Trey Townsend is really good, so they've got a kind of a, you know, inside-out punch with those two guys who could really shoot the basketball. And, I mean, what he's done in the last couple of days is simply impressive. You know, um, 
I want to say, what am I, 16 threes in two days. And so you got to pay so much attention to him. And, and here's what makes him really special is they know that he can shoot the ball, and so they do a great job of running a lot of plays for him and running off of stagger screens and, you know, trying to get elevator screens for him. And I thought our guys did a really good job. You know, we knew that we couldn't stop him from taking threes, but we wanted to make him make, take tough threes and shoot a bad percentage, and I thought we did a great job with that. Brooke, front right. Brooke Pryor, ESPN. Kevin, in addition to DJ having 24 points, I think you had four other scorers in double figures. Just what does that say about the balance of your offense and the way that these guys kind of complement what DJ's doing down low? You know, that's the strength of our team. And at one point, it wasn't. You know, we were, you know, early on, it was either DJ Horn or maybe um, JT could have a good night. I think, you know, one of the things, if you ask and you look back at those the seven games that we won in a row, is I think that everyone has really stepped up in different ways. And, you know, every night there's someone else. Um, you know, DJ Horn, I mean, DJ Burns was great tonight. Um, you know, I thought Michael, even though he might not have impacted the game as much with his scoring, he had a career high in assist at eight. And so that's kind of what makes us special right now. That makes us tough to guard because on any given night, one of these guys can lead us in scoring. Front left. Charlie Gribble, 24-7 Sports. Coach, talk about um, just how crucial it was losing DR and Middlebrooks there in the overtime period and the decision to sub in Jay and Taylor, who had a big three in those closing minutes. Yeah, we were running out of players. I looked around. I was going to put Levi Watkins in at one point. Uh, we needed another post guy. Uh, you know, we had some calls that didn't go our way. And, and I told you before, like I said earlier, Trey Townsend had a great game. I mean, 30 points and 13 rebounds, and he is as good as advertised. Uh, but it, it got tough at the end because we didn't have anyone else that we could throw in the game. And so we decided to go four guards. And it actually helped us on the offensive end because um, Jaden Taylor was able to knock down that three in the corner. Back left aisle. Mike Osti, Yard Barker in Pittsburgh Sports Now. Coach, what does it say or do you have any message to the rest of the country about the conference, about the ACC, just for the fact that so much is made on which conference is better and it's impossible really to equate, especially in a tournament like March Madness, but you struggled for a while in January, February, and yet you're here in the Sweet 16, and the ACC kind of had a rough road to getting teams in the tournament this year. Yeah, I think it's been a common theme for three years, and, and it's crazy because when we do – meaning we as uh, the ACC, we get teams in the, in the tournament, the few five that we're getting in pretty much play pretty well. And so we try to send that message early on before we got to Selection Sunday that we play well once we get in the tournament. Um, but we got to figure it out. Uh, our league is really good. You know, one of the reasons why we're playing good basketball is because we're battle-tested. You know, a lot of times um, – a lot is put on the non-conference. You play 11 games. So let's say we play five or six power five games, and then we have five or six by games. They're good. They'll challenge you. But you can't tell me that that's more challenging than playing 20 ACC games and playing at great venues, Pittsburgh, as you're here, and going to different places and being battle-tested. So we got to figure it out. Um, we're deserving. You know, we're, our, our league's going to go to 18 teams, and I think we should be able to get 10 teams in. And that's up to us as coaches. We got to figure out, you know, do we need to win more games in November? How do you schedule? We got to do a lot of different things. But we got a great league. I think it's the best league in college basketball. Back to Brooke. DJ. DJ said earlier that he made the choice to not get in his feelings when fouls weren't being called. He's getting hacked down low. Is that something that he's always been able to do, or has he evolved as a player to be able to not get in his feelings and play through those circumstances? You know, he's, he's probably – it's so tough to referee him, and he probably gets fouled more than anybody. And I'm not saying these officials or any other officials. Um, so he's got no choice. You know, very seldom do you see him get to the free throw line when you could make a case that every other possession that he touches the basketball, he gets fouled. And so we've talked about the maturity of it. It's like, what are you going to do? I mean, you, you know, you don't like it and get a technical foul. Just move on and just play through contact. And I think that's where he's matured. And it, it didn't happen just this year. It started last year. And then he's matured to the point where he's like, I'm not going to get any calls. Just play through all contact. That's going to be the last question right here, Red Isle. Bailey Tucker, College Basketball Review. Coach, since you guys were the 10th seed in the ACC tournament, where do you think that your team has grown the most between now and then? 
you talk about since we were the, the 10th seed in ACC, I just think we, we've come together. It, like, we, we've been a good team all year long. We just hadn't stacked games. We hadn't stacked opportunities. Uh, you think about, you know, I, a lot of people put so much into our last four games. And they didn't talk about our first six games. We were five and one. We had a tough schedule. And when we look back at it, it wasn't so much uh, about the teams that we played, which were very good. It's what we didn't do. You look at those four games, we were in all of those games to have the opportunity to win them. Um, and I just think we just – we have cut down on our mistakes. And most of them are on the defensive end. This team can score the basketball. But defensively, we, you know, we were, a, we were a mess at times. We – ball screen coverage wasn't well. Um, uh, our assistant coaches have done a great job with scouting. Uh, we wasn't doing a great job of comprehending scouting reports, and now we're doing it. And I think that one of the biggest things is we believe and trust in one another. You know, they, if you're not having a good night, then they, you got to trust your brother beside you. And I think that's one of the things that we matured in. Thanks, Coach. Thanks.